For a lot of us with smaller gardens, being more self-sufficient in food means maximizing the space we have to grow in. Now that's done by using techniques that allow us to grow more food in less space, like vertical gardening or interplanting. Now the epitome of that whole idea is what Native Americans call the three sisters planting. Three food crops that would not only grow well when interplanted together, but would actually help each other thrive. And today we're going to be planting a three sisters garden coming up. Hey, I'm Brian with California Garden TV, and if you're looking to join an online gardening community that offers tips, tricks, and support to grow your best garden ever and become a little more self-sufficient along the way, then get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now let's get growing. The Three Sisters crops are corn, beans, and squash. Now corn grows tall and it has a very strong stalk and that provides a support for the beans to grow up. The beans in turn are nitrogen fixers, which means they pull nitrogen from the air and fix it in their root system for the plants growing around them and themselves to take part. And the squash have really big leaves and they shade the ground to preserve moisture and to prevent weeds. Now there's a couple of different ways to plant a Three Sisters garden. It can be done in raised beds, um, probably not as well. And I don't have any room back here in my raised beds. So we are gonna go out to the front yard where I have a brand new uh, garden waiting for us that used to be, well actually our trailer, our travel trailer used to be parked there, but we moved that. And there's a brand new piece of ground that I've, I've worked a little bit. Um, Instead of talking about it, let's just go take a look. So this is the space. Along the back here, I have my San Marzano's and basil. And I still need to build the, um, the trellis for these. And then right up here, I'm going to be putting in a 3 foot by 12 foot raised bed. And it's going to be different than any raised bed you've seen here because I know a lot of you ask about raised beds and want simple ideas. Now this is a simple idea for a raised bed. Um, it's kind of short and some people were wanting taller, but then you get into looking at the ones in the backyard that I have and they aren't really the easiest to put together and to build. And so um, I actually found a product that I'm gonna try out and I will let you guys kind of be in on that and see how that works. But it's a fabric raised bed that's gonna go right here, three by 12. And I'm actually really excited about it. It looks like a, a very interesting product that um, I haven't seen anywhere else. Now right over here is going to be our three sisters bed. And this is about 12 by seven. And uh, I have, I don't know if you can see, but I've actually made two foot circles in the ground and I've got six of them. Now I've worked a lot of compost into this space so it's ready to plant and I've got six rings here. Now the traditional Iroquois method you would build up mounds about two to three feet across and about four inches wide or tall and that's great if you have a lot of rain in the summertime because it's going to allow for better drainage. We don't get drained during the summer, uh, rain during the summertime, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Typically, all three of these would like to be planted directly in the ground, but I wanted to be able to do more than just plant one bit of seeds for you guys. So I planted these um, early and look at the roots already. And the great thing about this is I can just cut the egg carton apart or even rip it apart and the corn isn't going to be disturbed all that much but two weeks before everything else is the corn then two weeks after that you're going to plant the beans uh, i'm going to be planting a purple variety called blauhildi and the reason i'm going for purple is when i tried the three sisters method uh four or five years ago it was really hard to see the beans because you're not only dealing with the bean stalks that are green, but you're dealing with the corn stalks that are green. And so there's a lot of green there. So you inevitably end up missing a lot of beans. So I went with purple so we can actually see them. That's the only reason you don't have to do that. Now, once you have the beans planted, you would go to the squash. 
and um, you can do that a week later or you can do it like I'm going to do it around the edges and so they're not going to be shading anything out. I'm just going to go ahead and do all of that today. Now for the squash, we're going to be doing pumpkins and cantaloupe. So let's get planting. Okay, so I'm going to take four double planted corn and I'm going to plant them in the middle. This mound or circle is between two and three feet wide. So I'm just going to dig a hole in the middle and I'm going to put the corn in. And with these paper uh, egg cartons, you can just leave them right on and they will decompose in the ground. But make sure you plant them right about the level that they were already growing. And then in this ring here is where the beans are going to go. So now these have a two week head start on the beans. So now I'm going to put beans, like if you picture a circle with corners, four corners is where I'm going to put the beans. I'm going to plant two seeds per spot. So two right there. I'm going to plant them about an inch deep. Two right there. Two there. All right. Now I'm going to go plant the rest of the six uh, circles, and then I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. I almost forgot the fertilizer. Um, I'm going to be using the kelp and the um, crab and lobster from Neptune's Harvest in each of these planting areas. I'm going to sprinkle a couple handfuls over the circle of each one. This one, big handful of this one. And this is going to give them all the nutrients they need, the phosphorus especially that can't move through the soil as easily. I'm just going to work it in. All right, now back to planting. And this does need to be in a full sun location. Um, I know it looks shady right now, but after about 12 o'clock, this will have six, seven hours of sun for the rest of the day. And I'm planting uh, two different types of corn. This is a sweet variety called Stowe's Evergreen, I believe. And then I'm going to be planting some grain corn, which is uh, Bloody Butcher, both from Baker Creek. All right, so we've got it all planted. And now it's time to plant our squashes. And so what we're going to do is there's... The sun comes from that way and goes straight over. So we don't want the corn and the beans to shade out the squash. So we want to put the squash on the sunny side of the bed. And so that would be this side and along the front. Because on this side, I'm going to plant the pumpkins and on the front, I'm going to plant the cantaloupe. So in order to do that, I just, I saved these seeds. We found a, Emily had gotten some pumpkins last year to decorate for the fall. And these were these little cute striped pumpkins. So. I have no idea what they're called. We just saved the seeds from them. And uh, I'm going to plant two seeds about two feet apart. So probably get three groups of seeds along this front here. And I've already worked in some of the Neptune's Harvest seaweed and um, crab and lobster. So I've got three groupings of the pumpkins and so what those are going to do is as they grow i'm going to trail them because you can kind of arrange a pumpkin and kind of train it which way to go i'm going to have it go in that way to grow in and amongst all of the corn and beans same with the cantaloupe along the front so i'll go ahead and do that and then i'll get back with you in just a second all right so it's all planted we're going to give it a good watering and then starting in maybe two weeks, I'm gonna start using the um, tomato and veg Neptune's Harvest formula uh, as a foliar feed and as a fertilizer. Um, that's every two weeks throughout the summer. I'm gonna use it on everything because so far it's, being, it's working great in the backyard and I've heard from so many of you that said your garden is growing like never before because of these products. So I'm so happy you guys are loving them as much as I am. And uh, I think that's it. 
I will see you guys on Tuesday.